Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, 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 go Ah, oh, man, what's up? This is Pastor Keenan with another episode on People Suck, Love Them Anyways and Because that's what we're supposed to do as everyday Christians, right? And, uh, man, I'm so jacked about this episode It's our second episode of the year uh, And, man, I tell you what, we're, we're bringing more people on this year And uh, we got some got some people lined up for the year uh, as well But tonight we have a very special guest with us And, and, and listen, I know, listen, for Wishing Church, I, I get it We're just a dot on the map right now We're coming up, we're doing some big things Things. But listen, we, we saved probably the biggest that we ever could for tonight, second podcast of the year, and I want to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever on this podcast, and how we even pulled it off, I do not know, besides, hey, G.I.G., God is good. But ladies and gentlemen, right now, let's hear it for Donald J. Trump at this moment. Donald, how are we doing tonight, brother? I'm doing fantastic for Mar-a-Lago. Oh, I'm glad man. I could join you all. Oh, I tell you what. Now, listen, Donald, I got to say this really quick before we jump into tonight's episode. Man, I tell you what, how exactly have you handled life in the last, man, the last year or so after you've seen what the country's been through and what people's been through? Well, first of all, the election was rigged. Everybody knows that, okay? <laughs> but I've been living the dream, okay? Yeah. Living the dream. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Fantastic. So I hate to bust everybody's bubble, but Donald J. is not with us tonight. But I tell you what, this guy that is holding this microphone beside of me could probably be a paid uh, impressionist, right? Is that what we call that? Yeah, impersonator. Impersonator. Yeah, impressionist, impersonator, whatever. But tonight, impressionist like an art or something. There we go. Yes, sir. But tonight, man, we are going to talk with a entrepreneur, business owner, and a guy who sits in our church as well every Sunday. His name is Charles Hutchins. Charles how yes, you sir. doing tonight, man? I couldn't be better, man. I'm excited to be here. Yes, sir. And uh, just so happy to hang out with you guys. Man, I tell you what, how do you feel sitting squished in between two guys like yourselves? Right now? Yeah. Pretty on, lucky. I was going to say, on a scale, guy in the world, I was gonna say, on a scale like, from one to yeah. ten, I bet you're feeling legit, About right? About ten, yeah. Oh, absolutely, That's man. It. Absolutely. Legit. Nick, how you doing tonight, buddy, before we get started? Well, apparently nowhere near as excited as Charles over here, <laughs> but you know, hey. hey Things well, are going good. Let know. me tell you something. If you had a haircut like that, buddy, you'd be excited, yeah, I know. too. I'm out here looking like that little freaky dude from the Honeycomb commercial. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, man. So, But we'll work on that. We'll get you cleaned up. We'll get you looking as business as what Charles is, all right? That's right. Absolutely, man. So tonight we are going to talk about a topic called Do the Work. Do the work, and uh, and we're going to come from from all angles, physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, all that good jazz. But we want to kind of set it into uh, into face with this uh, coming from James chapter two tonight. And I want to read some scripture to you, and, and we're going to talk about this, you know, about doing the work. But it's not just about. Uh, I, I think it starts. Of course, we always talk about how things start spiritually, and then they kind of, you know, they, they work their way down from there. But uh, we're going to see tonight about how faith, man, is good. But you know what? You got to act on that faith. So we are doing the work, but we're also doing it in every area of life. So listen to this, James chapter two, and then we're going to talk about it in verse fourteen. It says, "Dear friends." Do you think you'll get anywhere in this if you learn all the right words but never do anything? Does merely talking about faith indicate that a person really has it? For instance, you come upon an old friend dressed in rags and half-starved saying, Good morning, friend. Be clothed in Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk off without providing so much as a coat or a cup of soup. Where does that get you? Isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense? I could already hear one of you agreeing by saying, sounds good. You take care of the faith department, I'll handle the works department. Not so fast. You can no more show me how your works apart from your faith than I can show you how my faith apart from my works. Faith and works, works and faith fit together hand in glove. So that's James chapter 2 right there. And I think that is a very, very sturdy place to start tonight just talking about how how we have to put in the work and how we have to be able to not just talk about it but we have to be about it and we have to we have to back that up and so you know charles you being a business owner an entrepreneur and and doing your thing man every single day how important is it first and foremost that that you got to show up in business every single day to make sure that you're doing what you need to do right it's absolutely 
uh, 100%, you have to do it. Every yeah. day I show up. Now, when I first got going in business, uh, I would I would show up, but I didn't do the things that were really going to make me successful, like following up with leads, calling people back, right? things like that. Right. And now I'm in such a habit of it, developed over time. I show up every day. I do the mundane things that a lot of people don't want to do. Man, that's good it's, word. It's easy to do, easy not to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I know you've heard that expression lately. Yeah. But um, – no, you just got to do it. And if you don't do it, your business is going to suffer. It's just right. that simple. You want results, you got to put in the work. Absolutely. And, and I like that because that's from a business aspect. But Nick, tell me, man, faith aspect wise, I mean, he's talking about showing up and doing the mundane things. And, and in order for us to see something big, uh, something, uh, you know, something huge within the church, man, I mean, do we not have to show up and not just say, oh, we have faith, but to really act on it and, and maybe do some mundane things that we consider small, that we consider not very important, but yet, you know what it's those things that build us into something great right yeah i mean we've talked about it a couple times in in the podcast and episodes prior to this but you know understanding that you know you can't necessarily just pop in and expect yourself to automatically become a leader or have position and authority and all that kind of stuff you know when you you know first walk into the kingdom of god one of the first things that we have to understand is that we are called to serve right Um, and serving looks like a lot of different things and it can kind of uh shape itself around a lot of different capacities you know it may be vacuuming the floor maybe cleaning the bathrooms Mm -hmm. mopping sweeping something along those lines but, you know, as the Bible says, you know, if you're faithful with a little, God will make you faithful over or make you responsible over a lot. Right. Um, so, you know, I think it's you know important to understand from a faith perspective that sometimes we have to do the small things, the things that we don't want to do, the mundane activities in order to eventually be responsible and gain responsibility over more. Absolutely, man. And, and like we even had a prayer Sunday uh, over business leaders or over business owners inside the church. And, uh, you know, just a powerful prayer of how God's going to bless work and moving their businesses over this year. But, uh, you know, Charles, let's talk a little bit about, man, just for a second, of how uh, of how you've built your business over the years. Uh, you know, because yeah, as Nick was quoting about, you know, quoting the scripture about, hey, if you're faithful over little, he'll make you rulers over much one day. Yeah. Uh, you know, talk about how, man, how you maybe started with just a little bit and, and, and how your business has grown over the years to what it is today. Sure. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say thanks for that prayer on Sunday because I went absolutely. out and killed it on Monday. Oh, absolutely. Hey, hey 22 like, sheds, right? No, not that many. <laughs> I wish it was. That would have been abundance. You Absolutely, know? man. Yeah. But uh, no, I've, I've really had a good week so far, and that just really made me feel good. You know, right? Yeah. But as far as building my business, I started out with like eight displays. Yeah. Like shed displays, right? Yeah. And um, I remember I didn't know anything about the shed industry. It was pretty new back then. Mm-hmm. Twenty-seven years ago is how long I've been doing this crazy business, man. Right. But uh, I just. Took it from the beginning, man. I met every customer. I talked to them. I tried to help them out. Yeah. You know, you know, sales is just about helping people is all it is. Right, right. Same with spreading the word, right? Right, right. Just helping people out, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, at first when I got going, I got to admit, it was more about the money. I right. wanted to make, hey, I want to make as much money as I could. Absolutely. But as time went along, I took the money equation out of it. And mm. when you, when I did that, it opened up. I was so much more successful by helping others. Right, 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 right. And that's the basis right there, man, like where you talk about taking the money out of it and helping others. I think that a lot of times, like we can come in and we can be, uh, Nick, you can talk about this for a second. We can be so, I think, driven as far as like we want new buildings and new stuff and, you know, and, and we want bigger stuff and better stuff and all kinds of stuff. But if we really take that equation out and, and like Charles was talking about, you take the money out of it and you just start helping people in the process, you know, how much bigger can you get with that in the process? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes that stuff, that, you know, it, we have to understand that, you know, that have, or have faith, I guess, that that stuff is going to come. But we don't we, – that doesn't need to be our primary focus. You know, right. the primary focus of a church is to reach people, help people, save people. Um, but, again, we, I think a lot of churches, you know, and even ourselves have at, at times, you know, gotten bogged down in the numbers. You have to have the podcast. Like, I have to have this many downloads to be successful. That's I have you, to have bro. This, That's not me. That's you. I know. I know. Okay. All right. Uh, again, hey, you hey. Know, just, you know, we have to have this much to be successful. Yeah. We have to have this amount of money. We have to have this many lights. That's your fault. Um, you know, we have to have all kinds of different stuff. You know, that – I'm we, glad we Charles is sitting in, that, in between right? us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's choking yeah. me silently, but – but, yeah. um, you know, I, I think it's important to understand that, you know, if we're faithful over what God's already given us, he will eventually provide more. Um, it's just, again, sometimes we get stuck in the whole, this is how, you know, I have to control this. I have to have this. I have to have that. 
Um, but you know, sometimes it's just about sitting back, um, doing what you're supposed to be doing, uh, trusting God with it, and then He'll provide what you need when it's time. Absolutely, man. And so, like you know, as you're talking, Charles, about just over time that that you're trying to move the equation around just a little bit. You know, right. like your focus was money. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, I think people can get caught up in that a lot of times. And and we've talked about how you know money is a tool. Like you know, you know, we we're not meant to serve money. Money's a tool. Like right. money's meant to outreach. It's meant to help. It's meant to bless. It's meant to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, but once you took that equation out and you went straight into helping people, then your business just blew up, you know, it really did. And, and so whenever, you know, whenever you start helping people, um, you know, you're really putting that faith into work at that point in time, because, you know, you're not really worried more about bottom line. I mean, again, you want to make a profit because that's how you stay in business. Right. (laughs) But at the end of the day, I think that profit comes whenever, you know, the word comes that, you know what? I mean, Charles Hutchins, he's, he's going to sell you a shed, but you know what? You might also be a life long friend you might also find out somebody that can help you might have connections to help you some other way you know things like that so um you know really talk talk just a second about building a a relationship with people it's not just about business but it's about building a lifelong relationship with people as well absolutely um when somebody comes to my sales lot you know obviously i ask them you know what they're looking for and things like that but i also ask them questions I may pay them a compliment, like what about their car or a shirt they're wearing or something like that. But I also ask them, like, how many kids do you have? You know, where do you go to church? Right. You know, as the conversation progresses, I try to get to know people mm-hmm. um, a little bit, you know, and I think that really breaks down that barrier right. of uh, them wanting to do business with you or not. It makes them a lot more comfortable when you get to joking a little bit. You know, they'll say, they'll start asking buying questions like, hey, you know what color roof can i get yeah this right. is my wife's personal favorite ready <laughs> i tell them you can have any color you want as, as long, long as, as it's black, black. that's yes, it absolutely and either they laugh which 99 percent of the time they laugh <laughs> right. or they just kind of like look at me like i'm crazy which i am crazy <laughs> right you right. know but uh yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely man so nick i mean you know and we'll flip-flop this back and forth as we go but nick i mean you know in the faith realm of things right there where you know building a relationship man is so important to people uh because you know, time and time again, when people walk in here, I, I think one of the best compliments that we get whenever people walk into church is that they feel like it's a, a family-oriented and like anybody's welcome type atmosphere. And I think, uh, you know, in order for people to uh, get connected, I think for in order to pe- for people to see faith in action and, f- and to see faith, you know, in works, that they have to feel included while they're in here. And so, you know, regardless of what they look like, the background that they have or anything else, you know, everybody, and and I, I want to kind of, I guess, maybe put a potential business spin on this really quick, but everybody is maybe a potential customer of Jesus. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, that. yeah. And, and so whenever you say that, it's like if you don't make them feel included, if you, if they don't see that faith in works, you know, if you're just going by like what the scripture says right here and you're saying, oh, you're, you're, you're you know, you're naked and you're hungry, but hey, be clothed in the Holy Spirit. Have a great day. You know, <laughs> like whenever you do that, like, you know, you're not really uh, acting as if Jesus would act, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we've talked a couple times about, you know, treating church like a business, um, and I think there are aspects of that that are necessary in Absolutely. order to run a successful church or create right. and manage a su- successful church. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that was hitting me as you were talking is that, you know, we're, we're kind of selling people on Jesus. You know, we're, we're trying to, you know, mention, you know, we're trying to tell them who Jesus is, and, and everything that we do should, you know, emulate Jesus. I was going to say the, it should reflect the, Yeah, exactly. Right. It, should, it should reflect that. It should, because, you know, I think, again, we, we've talked so many times before about how some people get so... Uh, steeped in religious tradition and things like that. And, you know, we, people, a lot of religious people are considered hypocritical or hateful or judgmental, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. But, you know, if we were really, really, truly selling Jesus, you know, who he really was, who he really is, right. you know, we, we would be emulating love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, kindness, all those sorts of things. Right. And so, you know, when, when someone's walking in a church, we need to emulate that by, you know, selling these people like, hey, this is who Jesus really is. Yeah. Someone right. who loves you, someone yeah. who's going to get to know you, someone yeah. who's going to get to listen to your stories, listen to your struggles and be there for you you know as we've talked before about you know how we, it's so important every single person is so important to a, a church atmosphere because they bring things to the table that other people don't True statement. you know someone may have dealt with depression someone may have dealt with an anxiety disorder someone may have dealt with an eating disorder or an addiction to pornography or cigarettes or whatever it may be and then right. someone's going to walk through those doors one day that struggled with the same thing you struggled with mm-hmm. and then you're going to have to help them through that because you've been through it before god has saved you from that and you can help that person experience the same salvation in, in, a, in a sorts there yeah let's hit dynamics really quick because you brought up a good point that everybody brings something different to the table and 
you know, Charles in business, man, like, you know, you deal with a different dynamic of people, you know, every time a customer walks in, it's somebody different. So they're right. going to bring something different to the table. Right. And uh, so talk about a little bit about how you kind of approach the situation of dealing with the different dynamics of people of, of just, uh, you know, of just how you kind of navigate, let's just say how you navigate a sale, you know, uh, how, how do you navigate a successful sale? Do you say a successful sale? Yes, sir. Where, where you make money at the end of the day well, they and you take in, me out to dinner money, afterwards. I get them a shed. That's it. That's <laughs> it's real simple. Yeah. Right. Now, I, I think kind of going back to what you were talking about, uh, different dynamics of people. I get people that come in and, and uh, we'll talk. I may not even sell them something, right? Right. But it may, I'm just planting a seed at that point. But they'll, they'll tell you what's going on in their lives, you know, and, and there's people out there suffering with a lot of stuff. Right. You know, they don't have money. I run into that. They're going through divorces. Um, they're sick. They know somebody who's sick close in their family. Yeah. And I try to sit there and listen and, and sympathize with them and, right. and talk to them. And yeah. uh, I've invited many people to church that way. So, right. hey, why don't you come on, you know, right. come to fruition and check us out. Yeah, absolutely. You know? uh, you'll get loved on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, you know, one of the things I like to do is when I do get here before church sometimes, right. I'll walk up to somebody I don't know and say, hey, can I get you a water or a donut? Right. Kinda, you want to be a servant to people. Yeah, Whether absolutely. Whether it's business. Yeah. You're spreading the gospel. Uh-huh. It's so important to be a servant. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I agree a thousand percent on that, man. And that's I think that's how you, you deal with the different dynamics of people. And that's how really I, I think people feel included in everything you know like you you off you you build that bridge a little bit at a time and that's right and and uh we just had a, a new guy show up sunday um that you know that i know outside of church here i invited him to church and you know one of the first one of the first questions i asked him was i said you know did anybody talk to you <laughs> you know and he's like yeah i had two or three people man come up and you know shake hands and he's like but he's like you know i'm shy myself he's like so i don't really you know discredit anybody for not coming up he's like but you know he said i uh see i had two or three come up and hang out you know and things like that and and i thought that was cool you know and and i think that's really how people um you know and i say this uh i guess kind of loosely but you know whenever whenever man whenever people come in let's just say they come into your shed business or they come into church for the first time uh i truly think that and this is just me but you know and, and some people out there might disagree with me but i think we have one opportunity i think we have one shot whenever somebody comes in for the first time we have a shot you know what i'm saying of of the taste that we leave in people's mouths you know what i'm saying and and, and i i mean that in the way of like you know whenever somebody comes in and don't get me wrong with the mindset that people have if you come in trying to find something wrong with your shed business or trying to find something wrong with church nick it's going to happen i mean but if you come in with an open mind like i'm going to try this place out and let's see what happens you know we have one shot as churchgoers business owners whatever we're talking about we have one shot to really leave a great impression on somebody you know and if somebody walks in and sits down and nobody talks to them nobody helps them nobody makes them feel included you know it's it's stagnant it's stale it's it's like a it's like a funeral home in here then you're going to leave that impression on people that it's like well i wasn't even included there what's the point of going back and so so, you know, Nick, uh, and, I, and I'll switch this over to Charles, too, but Nick, man, just, you know, in that aspect, man, talk about that, how important it is, man, to to understand that that one shot, that one opportunity, uh, you know, as Eminem would quote time and time again, uh, how what, how important is that one shot or that one opportunity that we, that we kind of uh, veer away from what we do regularly on a Sunday morning? Let's just say, I know you're in charge of a lot of things on Sunday morning and stuff set up and things like that. Like, what if you were to veer away and say, you know what, I see that person down there, nobody's talked to him. I'm going to go, you know, what? Who, who, well, somebody else will get the lights going. Somebody else will do this. I'm going to go talk to this person. You know, how much more important is it to include the person than it is to just stick to the process? Yeah, I mean, because if you, if you t- spend too much time focusing on, you know, lights, sound, you know, the, the stuff that, as we were talking about earlier, that you think is supposed to make church work, you neglect what right. church is actually supposed to be for. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I think that that's something that can happen frequently. You know, we, we get so bogged. You know, I remember um, the, the church I went to with my parents, you know, the, the pastor there was was an amazing, amazing person, but he Not was as very cool busy. As me. Right? Yeah, we, we, okay, all right, uh, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, anyway, he he always seemed so busy, you know, like because there would be two services after the first service was done. You know, we'd be walking in and he'd be running out the door. You know, just barely shaking hands, barely having time to talk to anybody. You know, and and there are times where I was like, you know, you know, I, I wish you know he would have more time because I know I know that as a pastor he he wants that more time. He may not be able to say it, but you know he 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 wants that more time because yeah. again, at the bare bones of everything, you know, being a, being in a church, the point is reaching people. 
making yeah. connections, building relationships. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I, I've I've seen that happen. You know, time and time again. You know, I, even when I was going to that church for you know eighteen years, you know, I would still have people walk up to me that had been going there longer than me and ask who I was. Yeah. Like, and that's crazy to me. That was right. always crazy. And that made to you me. feel wonderful. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I was going there because my parents went there. You know, it's just you know I was young still and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. But you know, I, you know, Charles, everybody, I'm just a little kid over here talking. About, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you have a beard at twelve? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, right. It's weird. Um. But you know, it, it was just you know again. I, I went there my whole life. People still didn't know who I was, and you know that makes me feel like you know I, I never felt like I could be included in anything. Yeah. And so I, I I try to you know remember that as you know people are coming in here at fruition. You know, if I see somebody kind of sitting alone, you know, nobody's talking to them. They you know they're not getting involved. They're not hanging out laughing or cutting up with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to make sure that you know somebody has talked to them. Somebody has reached out to them. Right. You know, even you know and that this comes in from a leader standpoint. You know, sometimes if you can't do it, delegate it so someone else can do it. Hey, go, you can go check out that guy. Make sure he's doing okay. Make sure True everything's statement. going fine. Right. You know, I think that's something that's important as well is delegating those type of opportunities to people. Yeah. Um, because you know, again, God sees your heart. God knows that you want to check on that person. God knows that you know you have that mindset. So you know, using someone else to do that is just what God does every single day. Right. Absolutely. Um, so you know, understanding that that's an important part of it all as well. Right. Um, and, and and I want to talk about this really quick too. And Charles, I'll, I'll bat it back over to you, right. man. Is the fact of that it doesn't matter how great of product you have. If if the experience is not there, if the if the um, if the action is not there, if the you know if the enthusiasm, the intensity, the whatever you want to call it, man, like it doesn't matter how good a product that you have, if people show up and have a horrible experience right. at your lot, at your church, or whatever, man, like it, your 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 product almost becomes um, you know irrelevant at that point you know what i'm saying because 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 you have at that point you've not really connected with the people right you're ready for a news flash i'm i'm ready this is the best thing here we go go. all right people are going to buy you not the product not the shed not the church they're going to buy you okay i like that so going back you know ralph waldo emerson said nothing ever great was achieved without enthusiasm true statement i think about that i, I need to learn that a how bit. many places <laughs> do you go and people are humdrum well you know I, i'll i'll uh nick I'll every tuesday night yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> <laughs> every tuesday every tuesday right night. on cue man oh man but um my main goal every day is to be the nicest person that my customer has spoken to or ever will speak to because I'm under no illusion. I'm not the only one out there that sells this stuff. Right, right. Right? Right. So when somebody comes to my lot, I always try to greet them with a smile mm-hmm. and just let them know I'm here to help. Look right. around. I'm not going to bother you. Right. And, um, and and let me tell you a good story. It, it, it works the same way with business as it does with church. I've had customers come in and they'll say, hey, I'm buying from you because – Right. I went next door. I went down the street. They didn't even want to talk to me. And they were kind of about half rude, acting like they don't need my business. Right. Same at church. When people come in this door, we need to be the nicest, most accommodating people these folks have ever seen. Yeah. And not not just in churches. I really, really like that, you know, because, I mean, I think, you know, when we're out in the community, when we're out in the the town or wherever we're at, I think, you know, as a Christian, that should be our mindset. Right. You know, we want to be the nicest person that that McDonald's employee has met today. Right. Absolutely. We want to be the nicest person that that person who left their card out yesterday (laughs) has met. Uh, but you know, we I think that's a very, very important thing uh, to to kind of adapt and adopt as a Christian. That should be a really good mindset we should hold on to. But there's Absolutely. a warning. Go ahead. There's a warning. Yeah. While we're being nice to everybody else, you got to bring that home to your spouse too. Because my wife reminded me on many occasions. She says, <laughs> "Why aren't you as nice to me as you are your customers?" <laughs> oh, and I told her, go. I said, "Well, give me a call here about a building, and guess what? I'm <laughs> super nice. You buy you know, my product. You buy, I will, yes, I will be so nice. I will, but no." Yeah. I think sometimes we run out of that at the end of the day and we come home. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Oh, I don't know how yeah, you, yeah. Handle it. you may be the coolest husbands in the <laughs> no, world. I don't I'm, I'm going to chime in yeah, because I know Andrea, my wife you know? listens. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to chime in here in a minute because, yeah. But anyway, I just, I'm trying to be more uh, accountable about that. It's yeah. being. Great to my family too, right? You know, right? Yeah, and that's it too. I agree with you a thousand percent because I mean, and that's what you know. Uh, even my wife will say that a lot of times. She's like, you know, Keenan, I feel like people get the best of you, and then I get the rest of you. You yeah, know, absolutely. and it's like, yep. and I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, I, you know, you sit back and you think about it, and and it's just it's a hard life to juggle because there's so much you know going on between uh, you know church and the gym, and then like you know trying different business ventures and right. and everything else, and it's like you know being an entrepreneur is hard because you know it's you. You don't blame me. 
anybody else. You know, it's you. And and at the end of the day, you have to sell your product, believe in your product. And I guess, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm I'm Superman or anything like that. But like, you know, I kind of walk both sides of the fence of where, you know, not only am I trying to hit this from a uh, physical standpoint of, you know, personal training and health wise, but also nutritional side as well with supplements. But then I have to walk the other side of it in the faith realm of, you know, supporting and, and, and showing that Christian side of it's like, you know, and, and, and I mean, and Nick, you can attest to this, but like even sometimes, man, like I, I take my job so serious that it's like I almost feel like that that if I'm not 100 percent the best of me all the time to everybody that I come in contact with and things like that, it's almost like I feel like that I maybe lead them down a wrong path or I give them a bad example or, you know, whatever the case is. And so it's like I, I, I think that a lot of times I just get so exhausted with being everything to everybody that whenever I come home, you know, and I sit down and and you know and it's like now it's time to be husband and it's time to be father and i'm like god can't you just you know like can't you do your own thing and can't you do you know whatever and it's like you know it's not the fact that i hate being at home or i hate my family like i love my wife i love my kids i love that but it's just like you know you put so much out there every single day because um uh, you know i know like your livelihood rides on that you know your your livelihood your business rides on that and and, and you know to me like i'm the leader of the church so i feel like the church rides on that i feel like my business rides on that and and nick you can even talk about it you know with the fact of that like how important is it that maybe because you got a child coming uh you know not too long uh, away um mckenzie thinks it's tomorrow i think right uh but Feels like that yeah right so uh but you know like you can talk about it just for a second man about how you know trying to trying to carve out that time of you know of of we're talking about doing the work of being a entrepreneur or uh, you know your job or and and then we're talking about church and then we're talking about family like you know like there's a lot of work to be done right mm-hmm. yeah and I, I you know i think you know i know i've worked a lot and i have a lot of education when it comes to to psychology i'm not gonna throw any kind of hundred dollar words at you or anything nah, but, yeah, i don't have my thesaurus uh, right you, dude. yeah i know <laughs> um but again you know I, I think it's important you know one thing that i've learned and um I've, I've learned through my work with with that field and even through you know like retail and all, all the different job in life and job and life experiences i've had at my very young age charles uh all the all the different experiences that i've had um i've understand that one thing is that you cannot take your trauma home you can't let other people's trauma affect you you can't right. absorb that you yeah. can't just you know sit there and dwell on it mm-hmm. you know as a as a, you know when i was a kid teenager you know the angsty teenage years where you didn't want to talk to anybody about anything yeah. you just you know kept that stuff inside you just let it dwell and let it settle and let it erupt and build and create this huge horrible monster inside of you mm-hmm. you know th- this kind of stuff is it's real and it's something that we avoid on a constant basis you know yeah. i think we're just supposed to remember it you know like coming home to our, our family coming home to the people who care about us who decided to spend their life with us the kids who are part of us you know they are not supposed to be seen as a burden and i think a lot of times they are because we're so exhausted at the end of the day right. we've dealt with horrible people we've dealt with horrible customers we've dealt with people who suck the whole thing is probably we dealt with people who suck <laughs> yeah. all day long and we still try to love right? them and we, we try our best yeah, to love them right it doesn't work always but we try our best <laughs> um, but when we finally get home you know sometimes when there's extra work to do you know it, it is seen as is, is seen as an extra burden it's seen as right. too much wanting to do but yeah. again you know I, you know i was reading um, this book by tim tebow this week called mission possible and he's talking about being faithful and just being motivated with what god has already given you because right. you know if, if you know god has given you that family god has given you those kids god has blessed you with the ability to have a you know a wife and kids and a job and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know that that blessing doesn't end when you go home you know you right. may act happy and excited and joyful and passionate at work why don't you act like that when you go home right. you know, that's your safe place that's your place to relax and to just let yourself be yourself yeah. you know be authentic you know you're you're talking about that person who chose to spend the rest of your life with you that person who seen has seen you at your worst and has made a vow to love you at your worst mm-hmm. you know but we we sit here and we hide behind it or we don't want to deal with it or we don't want to mess with it and i think that can cause a lot of different problems you know that that hasn't been addressed in a lot of different cases and so you know i think you know we we need to be open with who we care about we need to be open with uh the people that we are allowed to be open with yeah um it's just very important to make sure that we we because again if we don't deal with that 
we're going to have that struggle in a lot of other aspects of our life as well. Right. See, I'm glad you're here, Charles, because, Nick, you know. I tell you what, for being 12 years old, he's got a lot of insight <laughs> he? and a great beard. I wish I could grow a beard like that. I know. You know? Absolutely. That's beautiful. Man. Yeah. It's the St. Nick jeans. You know? I like it. It <laughs> gives you wisdom. I like it. Yeah. I want to uh, I want to kind of like bring this in for the landing because you said a word in there that really I think is kind of like at the center point or the essence of everything right here where we talk about, you know, doing the work and its motivation. Uh, what, and we're going to go from a business aspect and we're also going to go from the faith aspect here, but business wise, Charles, what, what motivates you? What is your solid motivation for doing what you do day after day, moment after moment, time after time? What is your motivation? In the beginning, I'm it, was money, you, you said, it was money. It was money and I wanted a Ferrari and I wanted a <laughs> mansion. I wanted yeah. to go to all the nice restaurants. And do this. Now, Hey, last 15, 20 years. Yeah. It's really been about taking care of my family right and you know building a really credible solid business uh-huh. but it's about taking care of my family and helping others you right know, I like, absolutely i mean i love uh i like Dieter and i like to help others right and i gotta tell you something i got the greatest wife in the world i really yeah. do she puts up with me she's decent yeah, she's a kid. <laughs> hey, man, look, I got to go home. She got my, my job. So <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. She, she's just incredible. I'm serious. I'm going to give her some kudos here for a minute. Okay. She's the greatest mom, yeah. uh, greatest wife. Even when I'm terrible, yeah. she lifts me up. Right. You know. Did y'all fight today? I'm going to cry. No. <laughs> no. Are you Ironically, Are you? there's no fights. <laughs> no fights <laughs> you know? today. Yeah. But, no, I just uh, – we all have great wives right and um i just sometimes we take for granted the people we love the most yeah but my motivation is all about taking care of my family i don't care about me i'd starve to death if i had to yeah um to take care of my family yeah and so nick build on that man because how important is it it, because we see we see coming to church as as this simple point of you know of oh i just come to church to come to church but how important is it as you and let's just i mean you know we're we're guys sitting here talking and how important is it because you know statistics show that if a man comes to church and brings that that if he comes to church that there's a i think it's like a 92 percent chance that his family will come to church with him if the woman is the leader you know and saying ah oh, it's time for everybody to go to church and there, it drops down into i think it's like the 60s maybe low 70s mm-hmm. if a child is the one who's suggesting coming to church there's a four percent chance and so you know as a guy coming into church you, you know you bring your wife every sunday and you know, like i said you know y'all y'all are fixing to have a child here before too long how important is it man kind of like what he said it, it's you're bringing your family to church but you're not also just bringing them to church you're, you're taking care of them as well by mm-hmm. doing and that. I, I think you know again I, I can't quote the exact thing but you know I, I i've kind of thought of it as your family is your first ministry right you know if you're not taking care of your family if you're not ministering to your family then you're not going to effectively do that anywhere else with anyone else right so you know, you you may think you know. I, I think you may think that your family gets the leftover of you at the end of the day, mm. um, but you know, I think it's that you know you start out with a little, and in that situation, you know, if you're yeah. not the way you treat your family is the way you're secretly going to be treating other people out in the community. Right. You know, if if you're not treating your wife or your kids with respect and love and kindness and grace and mercy and forgiveness and all that kind of stuff, mm. you're not going to do that without with these people that you could care less about out in the streets. Right. You know, the, these random people that you meet on a daily basis. You know, you're not going to treat them, or at least you probably Probably shouldn't treat them better than you treat your wife at home. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you're treating them better than you treat your wife at home, I feel like there should be a, there's a problem there. Right. You know, because you know, again, these this is your family's your first ministry. You're supposed to lead them, guide them, and direct them before yeah. you lead and guide and direct anyone else. You know, I right. think it says in the Bible, like if your family's not saved, you ain't gonna have any hope of saving anybody right, else. Right. 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 Um, so you know, I think that's something that's also really really important to 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 think about and to know. You know, and not to get or dive too deep into the you know the whole like biblical. Uh, hierarchy of a family and how it's supposed to go because I know you're talking about you know if a if husband goes to church right, you know, right, the wife's right, going to be more likely right. to but you know I do think it is important you know to have that role model in your family someone that you know you can look up to not only as a you know a business wise or a you know a physical wise or a and financial wise or anything like that it is important to have that that uh, spiritual mentor in your family someone who's going to make sure you you know pray at dinner someone who's going to make sure you go to church someone who's going to make sure your kids are involved in kids church or youth or whatever it may be you know you want that leader in your family you know is because because if if their heart is for Christ and their heart is for you and your their heart is for love their heart is for joy and grace and mercy and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff and that's the kind of heart that people are attracted to you know at the end of the day that's that's the type of people that people are going to gravitate around and rotate around and all that kind of stuff so yeah. you know i think again you know we need to understand that our family is our first ministry 
And if we're not treating them well, we're not going to treat people in the world world well. Um, so again, you know, if I think that's something, you know, if you're struggling, you know, with your family, if you're struggling with, you know, treating your wife well, or your kids well, and you feel like, you know, you're a worthless pile of crap at the end of the day, and you don't want to talk to anybody, hear from anybody or think about anybody. Yeah. You know, I think that that should be a mindset shift that we need to make because right. again, you know, those people are the people that, um, you know, have seen us at our worst and still want to hang around us and the people that are expecting us to lead them and guide them and direct them. Right. And so, you know, if we're not helping them out, then we're not going to be able to help anybody else effectively. Right. What was you going to say, Charles? You look like you had some words. Man. When he said worthless piece of crap, I thought, has Dieter been cogging? You? <laughs> <laughs> she's has called, my wife man. called you. Yeah, she's like, called, man. Say these things. Absolutely. You know? Texted you out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's close this down, man. Any final thoughts? Or I just want to go around the table here really quick and I guess hit some final thoughts. But, uh, you know, we're, we're calling this, you know, do the work. Uh, you know, Charles, uh, Business wise and, and and faith wise too, man. If if you're if you're talking to somebody that's looking to uh, become an entrepreneur, they're looking to become uh, you know successful in their own business or you know and and finding a good church to settle into or whatever the case may be. What is your advice to them on how to do that? Well, as far as becoming an entrepreneur, I mean, there's no one liner, man. You right. know, pick out what you're going to do. Yeah, and then. Talk to some people who have done it. Right. And That's get a huge. solid plan. But here's That's the huge. deal you got to stick and stay to get your pay in business. Yeah. Stick and you stay. Know, a lot of things, uh, they don't happen overnight. It took me 27 years to become an overnight success. Right. Yeah. And I'm still not where I want to be. I mean, right. I just, I've been very blessed. I've yeah. had a lot of great customers. Um, my situation um, has been very blessed as far as that goes. Things kind of falling into place right. at times. But uh, as far as going to coming to church, uh, I think we have a big time opportunity here at Fruition. Uh-huh. There's a lot of people out in the community that are going to churches. They're not getting loved on. They're, they right. don't feel the way we're trying to. You trying know, to make they people don't, feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we have a, a really big opportunity here to serve them. Yeah. Do you agree with the statement? I heard a guy say one time, "Be like a post-it note and stick to it until it works." Do you That's agree with beautiful. that? I do. But here's the deal: you got to be in the right vehicle. Yeah. You got to make sure. Sometimes you get into business and it doesn't go well, right? And it may not work, but yeah. for the most part, get into it, stick and stay, man. That's right. what I, you know. Absolutely. Be consistent and persistent. Absolutely, consistent, persistent. Nick, build on that just really quick. As far as uh, you know, if um, you know, I know you've not been around from the beginning, but you've been uh, you know a large part of our uh, online growth and things like that uh, over the last year, year and a half. Um, talk about how, uh, in your own words, man, if we're going to build this thing up and be successful, uh, and just talk just for a second about how you would tell another church somewhere. And it just, it doesn't mean we're doing it the best, but I mean, just how about, how would you introduce, um, the success or the work of being a Christian to another church, how would you tell them to be successful in loving on people? I think one of the biggest things that was hitting me, and again, because I had actually just read this um, before I came here to do the podcast, but um, passion, I think, is something that's just huge and it's overlooked sometimes. Absolutely. Um, you know, just as Charles was talking, you know, you, you have to find the right car to be, and you have to find something you're passionate about in order to be successful. Right. You know, you're not going to be successful at something if you hate it. You know, yeah, we've all been in a job we hated before, a job that we couldn't stand, a job that made us just hate our lives. Yeah. You know, you, you you weren't going to move forward in that. Hey, 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 be careful. Be careful. No, just um, no but you know, no, we, no. we need to find something we're passionate about. And I think if you want to be in the in the ministry, you have to be passionate about people. Right. You have to be passionate about building and forming relationships and maintaining relationships. You mm-hmm. have to be passionate about being empathetic with people and understanding what they've been through, where they're coming from, what they've experienced, why they feel a certain way. You have to really dig deep and get to know people. I think that's where a lot of these mega churches kind of struggle is because, you know, yeah, they have a lot of people. People, but you know, does Joel Olstein know every problem that his members have ever faced before? You lose that connection, right? Exactly. You lose that connection, and I think that's one of the biggest things to think about. Is you know, another thing that comes along with passion. I think if you break it down into the old like uh, meanings of the word, is it actually comes from a word that means to suffer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we think about like the passion of the Christ. You right. know how Christ suffered yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. You know that was like the purest form of passion. Yeah. Uh, that was a kind of expressed to humanity, and so understanding that sometimes we have to do things that aren't fun, do things that aren't the most exciting. Sure. Just to experience what God has planned for us That's and true, just bro. to experience and yeah. fulfill our purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, gentlemen, I, I appreciate it so much. Uh, hopefully, people that listen to this, I, I'm hoping they're going to learn something in the spiritual side of things, hoping they're going to learn something in the uh, business side of things. Hopefully, something was said here tonight that will help motivate somebody, you know, to uh, uh, step out on a, on a limb, step out on a ledge, and just kind of go, you know what? I've kind of had a dream of doing this, being this, kind of, you know, opening up my own business or doing my own thing. Charles, hopefully, something you said in there will help 
helped guide them to that point or you know uh, maybe it's somebody that's listening that's not been to church in a long time and they're like you know what man something's been you know something really hit me tonight and, and i'm going to try to go find a church that's going to love on me that's going to accept me that's going to you know it's going to help you know direct me towards christ so that would be fantastic so gentlemen i appreciate you guys so much and uh again thank you for everybody man for tuning in to people suck love them anyways be sure to go ahead and download all the episodes tell all your friends about it and uh, again we thank you pretty we thank you gentlemen and thank everybody you. have a great great night be blessed even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 Thank you to everyone for listening to the People Suck But Love Them Anyways podcast. As always, you can check us out on Facebook if we're wishing church, YouTube if we're wishing church at Hodgenville, and check out our website at www.forwishingchurchky.org. Remember, don't suck and love people. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.